um, I will say originally that this talk was called The Magical Rule of VR Development and Why It Drives Me Crazy. <laughs> but then as I was doing it, I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to be more calmer about it and everything and not go all crazy. So it just became The Magical Rule of VR Development. So as I'm loading this up, hi, welcome. Um, I'm glad you are able to be here to hear me talk possibly and make sense, hopefully. Who am I and why I'm doing this? My name is Leonard Wedderburn. I'm a local dev from Lexington. I've been working in VR for about a year and a half. In doing VR development for a while, I've learned a couple of things. This new medium has created so many new ways to entertain folks that I don't believe in when you grasp the surface of what's possible. In the VR world, there are leaders in um, hardware. Um, crap. <laughs> Gear VR, <laughs> the Rift, and the PSVR. Right now, these are the top VR headsets that are out right now. Based upon this information. Well, based on the information about what actually fucked out just recently on the game Sutra, like um, snapshot of the industry. You see the HC Vive Rift, your VR, and placing the VR, the ones they're most focused on. Unfortunately, they chose to all that apply, and everything's over 100%. Don't like it, but anyway, that's sad as well. But yeah, you see right here that devs are focused on VR development, so that's really good to see. And everything. Um, all these headsets and everything. Um, so for PC, you have the Vive and the Riff, but for console, wait, wait, mobile, Gear VR, and then console, the PSVR. So there are differences between each type of headset, difference of developing for them are different. And also, um, VR, you have the Vive and everything. That's actually just for standing. This is for room scale VR. So, Question is, what does that mean for us as developers? What does that mean when we actually create the experience? Let's go into the past a little bit. So there are so many genres of games that are out that are, I mean, it's kind of amazing how many actually ideas and everything that people created. Um, pretty much the first person, third person, and side scrolling. The, um, Super Mario Brothers side scrolling. Um, also, but then you have a third person, which was Super Mario Sunshine. That's the one I just pulled up. I was like, I'm surprised I remember. Um, in seeing these type of gameplay, the player is able to see what's going on via a camera on the screen somewhere. Um, and they have a set way of seeing the world. So this is what we are used to. Um, of course, sometimes you got to find stuff in games, but pretty much everything is actually right in front of you. Because um, everything, you, you see everything that's going on or whatnot. But still in games, you have to find stuff. But for VR, completely different. Um, so based on the hardware that you saw before, you're able to move your head and see the world around you. Um, you become the um, character and everything. That's a big difference than what we see in the past. Our goal in, in creating is to, is to create a completely immersive um, environment to have you right in the world. I feel like you actually left this world and entered the one that we created. For new devs getting the VR, before we looked at those games that we've done in the past, based on their experience, they offer advice to those that can start working, so they can start working on their own games. What we discovered quickly in creating VR games was that there are some things possibly we're not ready for, things you possibly shouldn't do. Um, and like this video, we'll show that. <laughs> so you see a first thing, also a couple of things about this video. This is the DK1 Oculus Rift headset. And also he's standing. Bad idea, as you'll see why in a few seconds. You know, there is actually a VR workout for yeah. Yeah. where we are headsets. Yeah. What? Okay. Actually, it's a little bit long and everything, so I wasn't exactly sure. 
it's fine. So to have, give me time to catch up on actually what I'm trying to read. So you see right now that he's actually like scrunching up, preparing himself and stuff like that. He should be sitting down or whatnot. He knows he's going to do it. So his reaction is what happens whenever you actually have somebody that is not used to actually moving and actually that's not moving and they're actually seeing what's going on visually and everything. He's falling down and everything and visually, audibly, he's in that world right now and that's what he's experiencing. So this is really like a good way of like immersion and everything, but it's just so, it's, but yeah. 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 <laughs> so that, that's, that's, that's what happens when you create that type of experience and everything. But like I said, that was a DK1, O headset, and also um, he wasn't sitting, which he should be. So in talking about this talk, the name of the talk is What's the Magic Rule in VR Development? So what's the magic rule in VR Development? Oh crap. Oh, shoot. There are no rules in VR development. You should keep your shirt on though, if you want to. But seriously, yes, there are no rules when it comes to VR development. So seriously, yes. But there are guidelines. Um, actually, suggestions for Google Cardboard development. Um, they posted about it was that like to make sure that if you render a uh, 2D splash screen in a 3D space, make sure to do that. Um, the UI is not not uh, doesn't follow the headset movement and everything. Always maintain head tracking. Player is moving his head. You should be seeing exactly what's going on. User controls the amount of movement. Don't move the player unless they're able to actually control it. Which actually goes is interesting that also goes along with use constant velocity as well. They actually keep a constant velocity to stop them or move them fast and go back and forth. So these are just guidelines. But um, there are actually only, like, there's many ways of these guidelines being found. Each day. There are many guidelines being found each day as people, like, discover and actually create VR entertainment. And so... Why did I say there are no rules? Because guidelines are not rules. There are many games that take that break these um, these type of guidelines, but folks still play them. Um, the thing is that because of there's so many examples, I mean, of guidelines in which people don't focus on, and they're still able to create those experiences that people actually enjoy. Also. VR development takes longer than regular development of games. We're still trying to figure out what works and doesn't work. Um, but yes, we have been told as VR developers to break the rules and see what's new. We can't stay on the same path as before because this is a new medium. Originality and creativity are more important than ever now for VR developers to make sure that we're actually creating something and going beyond what we see in the past. It's only very young. It's only been going on for four years now. So we have just only started to figure out what we can and cannot do. <coughs> Too long, didn't listen. Um, there are so many new headsets that dev have coming out to create what a wonderful new content for it. There's a new headset coming out at GDC from Microsoft, which costs about $300, which is completely different. Um, it's going to use um, six degrees of movement and everything. It'll be quite incredible. HoloLens, no. It uses HoloLens technology, but it's kind of very different. Um, games of the past are very different from VR content being created now. Um, being able to launch a player into a world is a whole is a whole new way of being able to be creative. It's just a whole different thing than the, than the games in the past. And there's no rules to VR development, only guidelines. It's best to follow guidelines, but they can be bro broken and still enjoyed. 
We're going to have to figure out what we can and cannot do, honestly. Right now, though, you can do anything. Like I said before in the beginning, we've only started to scratch the surface of what's actually possible for VR. It's a long road ahead for what we got to create. Thank you very much for um, listening. Um, I know I kind of ramble on a little bit. I'm sorry about that. My phone didn't went crop away from me possibly and other things. Um, you can find me at KTP for Life on Twitter, and that's my email address in case you want to contact me about development. All right. Thank you. Also, I'm getting out of mine.